It's one of those sentences that you get used to hearing as a blind person. Ooh, you must have such a heightened sense of touch. What's it like to see with your fingers? Like many people who've lost their sight gradually, I had my doubts as to whether I'd be able to feel, let alone decode, the tiny dots that are used in Braille. And surely the part of my brain that I used to read with must have shut down at the same time as my sight. For many years, my vision was a bit like peering through a keyhole into a smoke-filled room. I'd catch glimpses of parts of things, and if they stayed still long enough, I might even be able to work out what they were. With light and magnification, I could struggle my way through a book, although with a decreasing amount of enjoyment as my remaining eyesight failed due to a degenerative eye condition called retinitis pigmentosa. For the past four years, I haven't even been able to see my hand in front of my face or the faces of my wife and kids, let alone print on a page. At the start of this year, I joined an online course and began to learn Braille. Reading it is like a form of code breaking. In its basic form, it consists of 63 characters, each made up of between one and six raised dots that are arranged in a matrix like a six on a die. The characters are embossed in lines on paper, and the reader reads by running their finger over the manuscript. Essentially, it's like reading 3D Morse code, but with just dots, no dashes. When I could see, I used to love doing crosswords and word puzzles, but since moving over to audiobooks, I'd begun to notice that I was forgetting how to spell. Braille reversed that, suddenly, I could see the words again. It feels like I'm reawakening a part of my brain that's gone dormant since I went non-visual. But is that possible? Professor Amir Ahmedi is a leading brain scientist and has a special interest in visual rehabilitation. So can you explain to me exactly what's been happening with my brain while I've been learning Braille? The back of the brain is dedicated to vision, about 30% for visual tools and for faces. These are two things that are, were very, very important to human civilization. And when we learn to read around the age of six, we suddenly have in the left side of the brain, the left hemisphere, we have a new area that is specialized for reading. In any language, any direction, any symbol, a blind person that learns to read brain, where this area for reading when he's using the sense of touch? Um, so we ran this experiment, um, and to our huge surprise, what we found is that even in people that never saw in their life, they have this reading center, the visual reading center, starting to report to respond to Braille. And the peak activation was exactly in the same brain area that the sighted person have for reading. So it's kind of like a language center, that part of our brain. No, because when you listen to words or you get the meaning without reading, you don't get activity in that area. So it's not a language per se area. Uh, it's an area that is selective to text, to symbols. If we think deeply of what is reading all about, it's about embedding the phonemes and the words in symbols. So for a sighted person, the symbols are visual. For a blind person, the symbols are braille. But once you get the symbols, you build again the phonemes and the words and the sentences of the meeting. And what the brain area is doing is taking the symbols and go back to meaning. And when you think about it this way, it makes a lot of sense that it's exactly the same brain area that is activated by reading through letters or reading through Braille. Quite literally, I am reawakening neural pathways in my brain and perhaps building new ones. Absolutely, yes. Our research shows that, for example, when you learn a new symbol and learn to read it, in a matter of two hours, you start awakening these neural pathways that were not functioning for many years, and you start to see selective activity in this visual, quote unquote, I call it now, word form area. And once you are getting back to using this symbol to phoneme, so when creating from the symbols, from the braille symbols words, 
it starts to work more and more and more. And it's a little bit like you say, it's like a, a muscle. So I better keep up the practice. And though I'm not ready yet to take on a marathon read like War and Peace, I'm getting a lot of pleasure just jogging through some short stories. It's code breaking and something that I can do that my sighted friends and family can't. But what does its future look like? I spoke to Karen Anderson from the US National Federation of the Blind. I don't believe that we will ever stop needing Braille. I think it's going to become more available uh, with technology. I think Braille is going to get just more and more relevant for blind people again. I want more people to start realizing, like you do, that, that Braille is really empowering and can be really physically comforting also. And so a system that was invented by a 15-year-old blind student in Paris in 1824, and which still bears his name, looks set to remain a cornerstone of independence and rehabilitation for those of us who read with our mind's eye.